Is there activity of demonic spirits in the world today? Ghosts, hauntings, seances, tarot cards, Ouija boards, crystal balls, what do they have in common? They are fascinating to many people because they seem to offer insight into an unknown world that lies beyond the limits of our physical existence. And, to many, such things seem innocent and harmless. Many who approach these subjects from non-biblical perspectives believe that ghosts are the spirits of dead people who, for whatever reason, have not gone on to the next stage. According to those who believe in ghosts, there are three different kinds of hauntings, 1. Residual hauntings, likened to video playbacks with no actual interaction with any spirits. 2. Hauntings by human spirits, whose natures are a combination of good and bad, but not evil. Such spirits may simply want to get a person's attention, others may be pranksters, but, in either case, they do not truly harm people. 3. Interaction with non-human spirits or demons. These entities can masquerade as human spirits, but they are harmful and dangerous. When reading about ghosts and hauntings from non-biblical sources, remember that, just because an author may refer to the Bible or to Bible characters, such as Michael the Archangel, it does not mean he approaches the subject from a biblical perspective. When no authority is given for an author's information, the reader has to ask himself, how does he or she know this to be so? What is his slash her authority? For example, how does an author know that demons masquerade as human spirits? Ultimately, those who address such subjects from non-biblical sources must base their understanding on their own thoughts, the thoughts of others, and or the experiences of the past. However, based on their own admission that demons are deceitful and can imitate benevolent human spirits, experiences can be deceiving. If one is to have a right understanding on this subject, he must go to a source that has shown itself to be accurate 100% of the time, God's Word, the Bible. Let's take a look at what the Bible has to say about such things. The Bible never speaks of hauntings. Rather, it teaches that when a person dies, the spirit of that person goes to one of two places. If the person is a believer in Jesus Christ, his spirit is ushered into the presence of the Lord in heaven, Philippians 1 21-23, 2 Corinthians 5 8. Later, he will be reunited with his body at the resurrection, 1 Thessalonians 4 13-18. If the person is not a believer in Christ, his spirit is put in a place of torment called hell, Luke 16 23 to 24. Whether a person is a believer or an unbeliever, there is no returning to our world to communicate or interact with people, even for the purpose of warning people to flee from the judgment to come, Luke 16 27 to 31. There are only two recorded incidents in which a dead person interacted with the living. The first is when King Saul of Israel tried contacting the deceased prophet Samuel through a medium. God allowed Samuel to be disturbed long enough to pronounce judgment upon Saul for his repeated disobedience, 1 Samuel 28 6-19. The second incident is when Moses and Elijah interacted with Jesus when he was transfigured in Matthew 17 1-8. There was nothing ghostly about the appearance of Moses and Elijah, however. Scripture speaks repeatedly of angels moving about unseen, Daniel 10 21 Sometimes, these angels interact with living people. Evil spirits, or demons, can actually possess people, dwelling within them and controlling them, see Mark 5 1 20, for example. The four Gospels and the Book of Acts record several instances of demon possession and of good angels appearing to and aiding believers. Angels, both good and bad, can cause supernatural phenomena to occur. Scripture shows that demons know things of which people are unaware, Acts 16 16-18, Luke 4 41. Because these evil angels have been around a long time, they would naturally know things that those living limited life spans would not. Because Satan currently has access to God's presence, Job 1-2, demons might also be allowed to know some specifics about the future, but this is speculation. 
Scripture says Satan is the father of lies and a deceiver, John 8:44, 2 Thessalonians 2:9, and that he disguises himself as an angel of light. Those who follow him, human or otherwise, practice the same deceit. Satan and demons have great power. Even Michael the Archangel trusts only God's power when dealing with Satan. But Satan's power is nothing compared to God's, and God is able to use Satan's evil intent to bring about his good purposes. God commands us to have nothing to do with the occult, devil worship, or the unclean spirit world. This would include the use of mediums, seances, Ouija boards, horoscopes, tarot cards, channeling, etc. God considers these practices an abomination, and those who involve themselves in such things invite disaster. The Ephesian believers set an example in dealing with occult items, books, music, jewelry, games, etc. They confessed their involvement with such as sin and burned the items publicly, Acts 1917-19. Release from Satan's power is achieved through God's salvation. Salvation comes through believing in the gospel of Jesus Christ, Acts 1918, 26-16-18. Attempts to disentangle oneself from demonic involvement without salvation are futile. Jesus warned of a heart devoid of the Holy Spirit's presence, such a heart is merely an empty dwelling place ready for even worse demons to inhabit, Luke 11 24-26. But when a person comes to Christ for the forgiveness of sin, the Holy Spirit comes to abide until the day of redemption, Ephesians 4:30. Some paranormal activity can be attributed to the work of charlatans. It would seem best to understand other reports of ghosts and hauntings as the work of demons. Sometimes these demons may make no attempt to conceal their nature, and at other times they may use deception, appearing as disembodied human spirits. Such deception leads to more lies and confusion. God states it is foolish to consult the dead on behalf of the living. Rather, he says, to the law and to the testimony. Isaiah 8 19-20. The word of God is our source of wisdom. Believers in Jesus Christ should not be involved in the occult. The spirit world is real, but Christians do not need to fear it, 1 John 4 4.